everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video we'll solve this problem from the topic of nlm and circular motion so let's start reading the problem a block with a horizontal nail has total mass of 5 kgs and can move on a smooth horizontal surface a small ball b okay this is the ball b and this is the block a by the way of mass 4 kg is hanging from the nail with the help of thin massless string of length 2.5 meters a small particle of mass 1 kg moving horizontal with velocity v0 hits the block b and gets stuck with it so we need to find this minimum value of v0 so that the block b along with this particle completes a circular motion about this nail so all of you guys do give this problem a try and then check out the solution so first of all it's given that this small particle after the collision with block b gets attached to it okay so so now we can easily conserve momentum, right? So we can say one times V naught is the initial momentum towards the right of this particle. And finally, both of them get attached together, attached to each other. And so the combined mass will be five kgs. And let's say their velocity, finally, it's V. So we can say V equals V naught divided by five. So what happens is that after collision, this B along with the particle has a mass of five kgs and they're moving towards the right with a velocity of v0 by 5 meters per second. So clearly now this block A is free to move, right? So once this theta starts to increase, what happens is that this tension will provide this block A a horizontal acceleration and this block A will start to move towards the right. Now, if a particle is attached with an inextensible string and it's given a velocity v, if it has to complete a vertical circular motion, then at the topmost point, the string should not become slack. Okay, so let's say its velocity at the topmost point is let's say V. So we need to make sure that this tension is greater than zero. So at this topmost point, uh, the only force acting on this particle is its weight, right? Weight and its and the tension. So we can say mg plus the tension uh, should be equal to the required centripetal acceleration for this particle, which would be mv squared divided by r. Now, now, as tension should be greater than greater than zero, we can say mv square by r must be greater than mg, or we can say v must be greater than square root of gr. Okay, so this is the condition that's important. So the minimum velocity of the particle at the topmost point in order for it to complete a vertical circular motion should be square root gr. Okay, and that's the result we'll be using here. So relative to this block A, if this particle B has to wants to complete a vertical circular motion, then the velocity at the topmost point must be root GL. Let's draw the final diagram. Okay, so finally this ball will reach at this highest point and relative to this block A, okay, with respect to a person standing on block A, the, clearly this block A will have some velocity, but that doesn't matter. Relative to him, the velocity at the topmost point must be square root of GL. Now let's assume this block A had some velocity V, which it will obviously have as it's being accelerated by the string, right? As the string is going, completing its circle, clearly this tension force is accelerating the block A, which means it will clearly have some velocity. Let's name it V. So relative to now, this velocity root GL was relative to this guy. So relative to ground, we have to add this velocity V vectorially to this particle. So this will be V in the sense. So this is the final situation of the ball. And this was the initial situation, right? Now, if you observe one thing, if we take the block plus the mass as a system, in the horizontal direction, there is no external force. And hence, we can conserve the momentum in the horizontal direction. So the initial momentum equals five times V naught by five, which is just V naught, right? And finally, this block A will have some velocity V to the right and its mass is 5 kg. So the momentum contribution will be 5V. And the contribution because of this ball is going to be the mass of the ball, which is 5 now, times V minus square root of GL. And G is 10 and L is 2.5 in this case. So square root GL, we can just write it as 5, okay? So I'm gonna just write it as 5 here. And the initial momentum was V0 as we calculated above. So from here, we v naught equals 10 v minus 25 this would be our equation number one so if we have one more equation then we can get the value of v naught so for that we can use energy conservation as there is no dissipative agents here right 
So the initial, so let's say this is the zero potential energy level. So the initial potential energy of this block of this ball B, we can write it as minus MGL. So the initial potential energy is going to be minus 5GL. And the initial kinetic energy is half mass of the ball plus the particle is 5. And its velocity was V0 by 5. So this would be V0 by 5, the whole square. And finally, this ball is at a height L from the zero level. So its potential energy is going to be MGL plus the kinetic energy of the system. So the kinetic energy of the block A will be half m v squared. And the kinetic energy of the ball is half m v minus root gl is again 5 whole squared. So now solving by solving both these equations, we can get the value of v naught. We can cancel out the phi's pretty easily. This gl will go on the other side and this would become 2 gl. I can If I cancel out all the halves, then this would become 4 gl. And the value of GL is 25. So 25 times 4 is going to be 100. Now we can substitute for V from this equation. So as you can see, this is A plus B the whole square and this is A minus B the whole square. So the 2AB term will get cancelled out. So from here, V naught will come out to be 5 multiplied by 15. That is going to be 75 meters per second. We needed to answer it. So this is going to be, if we want to write it in this form, it'll be 0 0.75 times 10 squared. So the answer for N is 0 0.75.